Hello guys, happy Friday. Welcome to File Feature Friday. How's everyone doing on this beautiful afternoon? It is so pretty outside here. It is just gorgeous. It's gonna be 83 degrees today here. So um, I had to actually turn on the AC today in March, that's crazy. Um, so let me know if y'all are watching, if you can hear me and see me and all the things. And we will get started here in just a moment. So the file today is this fun shaker file. Um, the link is in the video description and so is the coupon code. So the coupon code is shop till you, no, I'm sorry, it's not shop till you drop. It's love to shop. So spelled out like L-O-V-E-T-O-S-H-O-P, love to shop, okay? Um, that's your coupon code. That will get you 50% off of this file in my Etsy shop um, today through the weekend. So hello, Shirley. Hello, Irene and Kay. How are you ladies doing today? Thank you for joining me. Okay, so this is going to be super fun. Um, I've got a couple of pieces of cardstock cut out. This is my um, this is my acetate. It's got the tissue paper backing on it that I've not peeled off yet. Um, so let me get that peeled off. Does y'all's um, acetate come with a um, tissue paper backing? This pack that I bought on Amazon has this tissue paper and it's not stuck to it until you cut it. And then the, uh, the burned edge makes the tissue paper stick to it. But the reason why I cut it with the tissue paper on is because it um, doesn't give me the scorch marks when I cut it that way. Hey, Jeanette and Stacy, how are you guys doing? Um, Okay, my sound is good, Jeanette says. Good, okay, I'm so glad. And yeah, so you guys who were in my membership group last night, uh, we could not get StreamYard to cooperate, so we had to go old school old school with our video. Um, so I'm glad that we have StreamYard working. I think I figured out the glitch. So if you're in my membership group, hopefully the next time we have our virtual paint party, I'll be able to have the two, uh, like the double screen, like I normally do, because that is the way I like to go live, so. Okay, let me pop my little banner up here real quick. Um, if you guys have not subscribed to get my text notifications, please text me hey to the number on your screen and that will um, get you notified when I get ready to go live next time. Um, that I only message you when I'm going live or when I have like something special, something big in my shop going on, I will message you for that as well. But that actually goes straight to my phone. That is my um, my text on my phone. So I will see your text and I will respond if you, you know, if you ask me something or if you want to share a picture or something like that with me, I love to get texts from you guys. So make sure you are subscribed. Um, I will go ahead and take that down though. So you guys can see the screen. Um, you can always watch in the replay if you need to see it again. Okay. So let's get started. And make sure we've got everything in order. Okay. So I'm going to start with my big piece, my framed piece. So if you have not made a shaker before, um, shaker sets, the way that I do my shakers are you get one framed piece and you get one freestanding like ornament piece. So it's not an ornament like a Christmas ornament, but it's like a freestanding piece. Um, let me show you where did I put them. The ones that I made last night in my group. I just had them. Oh, down here. So these are the ones we made in our membership group last night. This is our Easter egg shaker, and you can see the little sequins floating around in there, and that says egg hunt. And then this is the little carrot, and we tied some twine around here. Um, how cute is that? I love that. I love the twine on there. And I used kind of like a brighter, pinkier orange for the carrot, so I just thought that was so cute. But we made those last night. So this is what I call the ornament, and this is what I call the framed piece. And these are perfect for tiered trays. They're perfect for home decor. Like if you have a cute little shelf that you decorate for the holidays. I have a little shelf in my kitchen that I bought from Hobby Lobby that I decorate uh, for every holiday, which I need to decorate right now. I'm my plan this afternoon is to get all my spring decorations out and get uh, some of that stuff put up because right now I have icic icicles. I can't talk today, y'all. I have ice skates hanging in my foyer. 
So yeah, and mittens, like a winter theme thing going on. So it's beautiful outside. I've planted flowers yesterday. I need to get my spring stuff out. Um, thank you, Shelly. She says super cute. All right, so let's get started. So there's lots of options with the way that you put these together. This is your backer. Um, I cut backer out of either eighth inch wood or whiteboard. So um, this one, the one that I showed you just now, the egg hunt, that was cut from whiteboard. So I did not have to paint that. See this back here is whiteboard. If you haven't cut whiteboard before, it's just a whiteboard that has a blackboard on the back of it. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. It cuts really nicely. You don't have to paint it. It's already painted. If you want black or white, you're good to go. Um, but today I'm going to paint my backer. So I've cut this out of eighth inch birch. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do, I was debating on like my color scheme. I'm thinking I'm going to go with like a pale pink and gold because I never do that color scheme. So I'm thinking I'm going to do something a little bit different today. And, um, and go for that. Ooh, I just squirted like a ton of paint out. Well, I guess I probably need a little bit more paint for that backer, so that might be okay. Mm, that's actually not a very big brush. All right, so this paint is Deco Art Americana. Y'all know my favorite paint. Um, this is cotton candy. It doesn't look like cotton candy, though. I would call that ballerina pink, probably. I think that would be a better name for it. Ballet shoe pink. I don't know if they have a, a color that's called that already, but it's a very pale, like cameo pink color. So when you make a shaker, um, the file that you get has, um, you get a zip file that has four uh, files inside. And the files each tell you what material you need to cut. So you'll have um, one file that is your quarter inch pieces. So quarter inch wood, it doesn't matter what kind of wood, you can do birch or maple or cherry, whatever kind of wood you prefer and have on, on hand. Um, could you spell the piece of plastic? It seems like I heard you say acetone. No, Irene, it's acetate, A-C-E-T-A-T-E. -E. And if you go to my website, lulubeandesigns.com, I have a supply list on my website and acetate is one of the products that I have um, listed on there. So that'll give you a link to purchase it if you want to get it on Amazon. You are welcome. I think they do sell it in some craft stores, but I get mine on Amazon and I've bought a few different brands and they've all been very similar, if not identical. So in the file, you've got your You've got four files. You've got the quarter inch pieces, and then you have your eighth inch pieces, which is what this piece of wood is that I'm painting right now. And then I also give you um, a file that has your acetate pieces in there. And the acetate is the clear piece that I just showed you that had the tissue paper stuck to it. Okay, so, and we'll, we'll get there. We're gonna put this all together. So these clear, you can't even really see them on camera. These are acetate, they're, they're floppy. They're just um, the same thing. If you're a card, a card maker, like if you come from the scrapbooking world before you got into wood, um, like laser crafting, I came from, I did paper crafting back in the day. And um, acetate was what we used to make shaker cards. So that's where I got the idea for the shaker um, frames and the shaker sets. All right, so there's our pink piece and we'll set that aside to dry. And then I actually don't need to paint my frame because I cut my frame out of whiteboard. Now in the file, it's going to tell you the frame, this frame is going to be um, in the file that is your, your quarter inch wood pieces. But you can, you can do this however you want, y'all. You can cut your layers. I even saw somebody said that they did not use any quarter inch wood. They used all eighth inch wood, but I like the quarter inch wood and you'll see why, because I feel like it's thicker and your sequins can move around a little bit better if your wood is a little bit thicker. But I just chose to cut my frame out of whiteboard because I wanted a white frame. So see how if I had flipped it over, it would be black on the other side. This is whiteboard. Okay. So it's already this color. I didn't have to do this to it. So these are already cut out for me. I don't have to paint them. They are good to go. If I wanted to, I could have cut them out of quarter inch wood, okay, which is what I did with these pieces, but I'm not going to use these because I just, you know, 
I have this as an option in the file. So it's however y'all want to do it. I'm going to do the whiteboard. Now whiteboard does leave a kind of black sooty residue on your hands and you have to wipe it off. I find it easiest to wipe it off while it's still laying on your honeycomb tray. So if you have a piece of whiteboard in your honeycomb tray and you cut it, if you take um, like a microfiber cloth or an old towel that you've ripped up and you um, spray a little Windex on it and just and wear gloves because you're going to get black on your hands and then just wipe it while it's still in the honeycomb tray. It will come clean for you um, and be less messy to work with. Um, Robin, you said you bought the wrong wood at Lowe's. Yours was melting and burning. Oh, no. The wrong wood. What wood were you using that was melting and burning? You mean the whiteboard? I'll link the whiteboard when I get done. Um, what piece am I going to do next? Let's do our shoe. Yeah, I'll link the whiteboard when I get done, but um, I don't think it should be doing that. I don't, I haven't heard um, anything about, yeah, you must have gotten the wrong product. I don't know what product you bought. Um, yes, Irene, I cut it. Are you talking about the acetate? I cut all this on the laser. I cut the cardstock, the acetate, everything on the laser. You can cut your cardstock and your acetate with a Cricut or Silhouette machine, but, um, and I have a Silhouette, but I just choose to cut everything with the laser because I'm already cutting all the other layer, layers with the laser. Um, white on the front, black on the back. It shriveled. That is so strange, Robin. Did you have your focus set right? I don't know. That's weird. Um, okay, so I'm thinking what color do I want my shoe to be? Okay, I've got to think through my layers here. So I've got a white frame. I've got pink for my backer. And then I'm thinking I might use this cardstock that I cut behind my shoe. It's got, it's like a creamy, uh, gold, but then I'm like, maybe, I don't know, maybe I won't because I've got white and I don't know about white and cream. See, I've got to think about all this. I also cut the pink piece, which would be cute. Maybe I'll do the pink. I can get it. I cut, I gave myself a couple of options when I cut everything out. So this is a piece of cardstock that I cut that is a patterned, um, just a pattern piece that I had in my stash. That's kind of pretty. And that would go on there. And then I could do my shoe in gold. I think that's what I'm going to do. So this piece of cardstock, which is something I had in my stash, see how it's got a little bit of a pattern to it, like a scalloped pattern. I like to use cardstock on mine. You don't have to. You can just paint the back of them and just leave them. I could put the shoe directly on this backer with no piece of cardstock back here. You don't have to do anything. But I just, I don't know. I like to use cardstock sometimes. So that's what I'm opting to do. There's, I'm telling you, there's lots of options with these. I'm looking for my gold Posca pen. Okay, so I'm going to paint my shoe gold. And this is a Unit Posca paint pen. And this is the metallic gold color. It is such a pretty gold color. It goes on really nicely. I may only have to do one coat because it really covers very well. This color does. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make sure I see all your comments. Um, Jenny, I have a thunder laser. Um, so my settings are going to be different for acetate, but I think if you have cut acetate before with your Glowforge, would y'all comment and say what your settings were? I want to say 540. Does that sound right? Some, I think somebody said 540 last time. It's basically the same you, that uh, setting you would use to cut cardstock if you've ever cut cardstock. It's it's really low power and fairly high speed because it's such a thin material that it cuts really fast. Um, my settings are different on my Thunder. I can't even remember what they are, honestly. I want to say, I think I cut mine on 500, but I think the speed is like, oh gosh, 20? No, it might be faster than that. I can't remember. Uh, the piece you got was called Dry and Chalk. I don't know, Robin. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll link the one that I used, but I've never had that problem with it before. So I'm sorry that that happened. That's scary. All right, so I got that. 
And then we're gonna need, that's gonna be cute. And then we're gonna need to paint our lettering, but I paint, this is my lettering, it's cut out, but I have a piece of masking tape on top of it just to hold my letters in here. So I'm gonna um, paint this, but I'm gonna wait until it's on my backer. So I'm, I'm letting these pieces dry. So now we're gonna um, move ahead to the other piece, the little purse. Okay, so the purse has, And this, let me show you real quick the order that all this goes in, because th those of y'all who have never done this before, this may not be making sense, and I may be totally confusing y'all. So let me just show you the order that it goes in so you won't be confused. Okay, so this is the piece that it doesn't go on the frame. This is a freestanding ornament piece. So we've got the, the backer, which is eighth inch. See how thin that is? Eighth inch wood. And then we've got the quarter inch thick piece. And then we're going to put on our acetate layer. So we would fill this up with sequins. And then we're going to put on our acetate layer. So this piece and this piece. And then once we're that's all dry and everything, we're going to put this piece on. And this is the only piece you have to paint is this top piece. And this is eighth inch thick. And that way it's all sealed up and you've got uh, your sequins inside and you can shake it around. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, so for my purse, I could paint this backer, but I'm not gonna paint this backer. I'm going to use my cardstock. So I want to do the bottom of the purse in this piece and the top of the purse in this piece. So we're gonna put these on here, make sure they're lined up. I have my contact in today. Um, Thank you, Kelly. You're so sweet. All right. Now to glue this onto my wood, I'm not going to use my usual like wood glue, stick fast glue. I'm going to grab some paper glue. I couldn't get this open last time. Let me see if it comes out this time. Yeah, it does. Okay. This is Tombow Mono Liquid Liquid Glue. Sorry. I'm trying to hold it up where y'all see it backwards to me. Um, this you can buy on uh, Amazon, but you can also probably find it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So isn't this pretty on the other side too? This is old um, Stampin' Up! paper. All right, so I'm kind of wishing I'd use that side of it. It's so pretty. But we're going to stick with this color scheme. Just make sure that's centered on there. Okay. And then you don't need a ton of glue. You could Mod Podge this on if you like Mod Podge instead, but I just use my scrapbook, my scrapbooking glue. All right. So then the next piece that goes on is going to be our quarter inch thick wood. And so I'm going to switch over and put this glue away. And we're going to use our stick fast glue. So this is my stick fast thick. You can get this on Amazon. It is a little bit expensive, but a little bit goes a long way. Um, Melissa says she's just logging in. She loves the paper on the project. Thank you. I like to use cardstock on shakers sometimes. I don't always use it, but I just think it has such a cute look. And the, it, there's so many options, and it's a time saver too, honestly. Let me think if I need, yes, I do need to put glue on that. And you don't need a ton of this stick fast glue because this a little goes a long way, like I said. And it is like super glue, so be super careful and don't glue your skin. Let me grab this so I can make sure it's lined up. And then I think what I'm going to do is grab my clamps. I've got, I've got these clamps that sometimes I use to make sure that everything is not going to come apart on me. You can get these clamps at Dollar Tree. 
I just picked up a pack of like four there. All right, so we're gonna clip that together and let that set for a moment. And then we'll go back to this other piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach my frame and make sure that all that black kind of sooty stuff is off of this frame because it does get on there. Heather, you were hilarious. She said she's supposed to be working. That is so funny. Okay, we won't tell anybody, Heather. Well, your secret is safe with us. <laughs> and just get all four pieces lined up. And you can just cut this out of the um, quarter inch thick wood if you want to instead of this white board and paint it white if you want to. This looks like it's got some, some of that black stuff on there. I'm just gonna hold that down for a minute. It dries so fast. All right, so Jenny, is that, is that the good stuff that you're linking or is that the stuff that messed up? Who was it that said that there's messed up? I'm trying to go back up in the comments. I think that was Irene, right? Irene, you were the one that said that it messed up for you. So Jenny, are you linking a product you like? Let me know. And Melissa says, yes, this is better than work. You put in your earbuds. That's so funny. All right, so that is pretty dry. And I don't know if you can see, but it does it does leave some residue, so you just have to go back and kind of wipe it. All right. I'm going to get all my pieces laid out for my shoe and my lettering before I glue things down and start putting sequins in just to make sure I have space for everything. So let me actually move the letters first. I like to use my frame around my letters, the little box as a guide just to see, you know, make sure they're lined up. And also the, the, um, the shiplap lines are included in the file. And I highly recommend that you um, use those and you don't take them out because they make it so easy to line up your letters and get them straight. <clears throat> That's why I love putting things on a shiplap board because it's lined up so easily. All right, hopefully all these will come out of here. Whoops, it's moving. But then we have all the inside pieces we still have to pop out. So, but it just gives you a little bit of a guide at least to where everything is going to be. That one's stuck in there. No, Irene, the acetate is not super thick. If you prefer to use uh, acrylic, you can. I would use the thinnest acrylic you can find though because it's gonna make your project thicker. So if you can find, um, I think acrylic comes in six, 16th inch, doesn't it? All right, so then when we put the shoe on, make sure that you have room for the shoe, so we do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my shoe on here like 
like that. I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting this on here straight. Like I want it. Okay, so that's in the right spot. Um, let me see if I have a pencil. I'm just making myself a little mark right here. You'll never even see that, but that's going to show me where to lay this back down. So I'll get it in the right spot. Just a little pencil mark. All right, so this is scrapbook paper. So we're going to go back to our scrapbooking glue. Oh, is it Blanca or Bianca? I can't see that far away. I'm having to look at my computer screen. Um, so she wants a laser. Oh, no, you don't have a laser yet. You got to get you a laser, girl. They're so fun. And, and I like this glue because it does give you like a little bit of leeway to move things around before it's like permanently stuck. And now we're gonna use our stick fast to put our shoe on. Don't need to paint this shoe because we're not gonna see it. This is the gonna be the piece that goes underneath. We're almost at the fun part where we get to mess with the sequins. Although I have a I have a sequin mess to show y'all. I had a little sequin explosion this morning. Yes, yes, it's worth the money. She's asking if a laser is worth the money. You're probably in the wrong crowd because we will all convince you that a laser is worth the money, won't we, ladies? <laughs> It is absolutely worth it. You can do so many things with a laser that you can't do with a Cricut or Silhouette. All right, I'm just holding that down. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and glue my letters down because, and you can use the 3M tape, of course, for this. Some of y'all probably use 3M tape for little letters like this. But I'm going to glue these down before I paint them because they are actually easier to paint when they're glued down already. I think they are. It's up to you. Just a personal choice. I'm loving this pale pink and gold. And whenever I do these letters in the file, the little dots on the eyes are attached to the eyes, just so y'all know, because that is a pain if they're not attached. So I make sure that they are attached in the file for you. So you don't have to go digging dots out for your eyes because nobody likes that, right? Is that lined up? I don't have the bird's eye view like y'all do to see if I'm keeping things straight. What color should I paint these letters? Y'all comment and tell me what you think. Do you think black? Uh-oh, my finger stuck to it. Black, white, gold. That would really, I guess, be the only options to stay with our color scheme. What do y'all think I should do? Would it be too dark if I did black? I think against the pink that would work, right? Okay, so our letters are glued on. Now, 
while that's setting, I'm going to go back to my little purse. Back and forth we go. And um, Blanca says she has a silhouette. Yes. Irene says, yes, get a laser. <laughs> We're going to convince you, I'm telling you. So let me show you my, my mess here. These are some sequins that spilled all over the place. They look like really good like Halloween colors, don't they? It's like mostly black, white, and purple and some orange. So anyway, um, I like to keep my uh, sequins all separated by color and they just all fell out. A lot of them fell out. So I've got that mess today. And has anybody commented what color? I have a BMO, but I would buy a bigger laser if I could again. I don't know what a BMO is, Irene. What is that? Is that a small laser? All right. So let's do some sequins because that's the fun part of this whole thing, right? Okay. These are on my supply list on my website. Okay, if you go to lulubeandesigns.com, you'll see I have these sequins linked from Amazon on my supply list. I'm going to fill this uh, area up down here with pink and maybe some gold in there too, I'm thinking. And I like to do different variations of the same color because I feel like that really makes the um, colors pop. Just keep adding until you think you've got a good amount. And then I'll show you, I've got a couple in there that I don't want. Oh, your tray size is 10, 10, seven by eight, five. Okay. Um, did you cut the paper pieces on a, I'm assuming you mean Cricut. No, I cut everything, Melissa, I cut everything on uh, with my laser. Yeah, I figured you meant Cricut. No, I cut everything with the laser. So I've got my little silhouette pick-me-up tool, you guys, that I use. This, sorry, I'm turning it the wrong way. Can y'all see that? This is called a silhouette pick-me-up. And this tool is for scrapbooking, but I have found, well, the sequins are sticking to me because they're staticky. But I have found that this tool is perfect because it's got a little tacky end on it. And I can go in and I can pick out sequins that I don't want. So there were a couple that were a little bit too purple in there that I don't want. I'm going to pick those out. And then I'm going to grab these that fell in the wrong compartment and move them down here. And sometimes another trick, I don't have one right now, but another trick is if um, they're sticking to your hands really bad, sometimes I keep a dryer sheet handy just to kind of like lightly put my hands on just to get the static off. Um, so that works too. And let's do, I'm looking for some gold. There's some gold in this one. I don't even know if this one's open yet. I think they're all open. I think I've used all of them so far. It's just sticking. Oh, it's open. The other end opens. I'm opening the wrong end. All right, so let's do some gold in there. And then I think maybe some white. Let's add a little bit of white. This is one of the ones that spilled. I got these sequins years ago at Michael's. Um, so I need to go restock or order the ones on Amazon. The ones on Amazon are the exact same, I believe. That's yellow. I don't want that one. And that just gives, see how that gives a little variation? We mix the colors up a little bit. I think that's cute. All right, now up top, I don't know if I want to 
maybe do y'all think I should add I kind of have like the desire to put a little black in this project what do y'all think did anybody comment sin said black for the letters I kind of think I should so I think do you think maybe black and gold up here on the top because we've got this is what we have so far I don't want to move it too much but I feel like we just need a little variation up here so maybe like black and gold on the top let's do that That green one out of there. That green one keeps wanting to jump in there. It's a different green one, but it keeps wanting to go in there. Do I have any other shades of gold? Let's see. I'm still spilling sequins over here. These gold ones, oh, I think I do. I have a different shade of gold. Let's do that. Like a more yellowy gold. This is one of the ones that is I'm having a fit with. It's making a big mess. So they were down here, but now they are sort of mixed up. So let's see what we got here. I know I'm throwing some copper in there. I'm going to get those out in a minute. Let's get those copper ones out of there. Um, Irene says black. Okay, good. Yeah, we're going to throw, I think maybe these, these are like a steel, like a steel kind of grayish black. Let's put a couple of those in the top. And then I'll put some like black, solid black in there. Most of my black ones spilled in this This little bowl. This is making things difficult. Let me see. Maybe I have some more black that are not mixed up in there. Or did I spill them all? Mm, nope, I think I have some here. In this lid. I have, I'm telling y'all, I have a sequin mess in my craft room. They're on the floor. They're everywhere. All right, let's see what that looks like. I think that's going to be pretty. That's going to give a little variation in there. Oops, I don't know why I keep putting it on the wrong side. Okay. Okay. And then I guess we'll go ahead and while we have sequins everywhere, let's add our sequins to our shoe. So um, I think we'll do the same for the shoe that we did in the bottom of the purse. Um, so we didn't do any black in there. Oh my goodness gracious. We have to find places to put sequins. Let me put these in the bowl. Although I could have used some of those gold, but they're mixed up so much. Just all mixed up. I'm sorry, y'all are hearing my laptop ding. I didn't turn off my email notifications, my volume. We've got a copper one in there. Get out of there. All right, and then our pink. Oh, thank you, Irene. She said, thank you for doing these videos. I like doing my videos. All right, let's get back to pink. It, for me, it's an easier way to show y'all how to use some of my files than it is to try to write it all down. I'm not, I'm not good with like making written instructions, but I'm, I'm better at like video instruction. Because I learn from videos, so I feel like a lot of other people must learn from videos, right? I 
I can't really describe to you how to do it. It's easier to do it and show you. Okay, I think that is good for our shoe. Okay, now try to keep some sequins from going everywhere. At least it's not glitter. It could be worse, y'all, right? It could be glitter. That would be worse. Now, all right, let's, you know what, let's finish this because this is pretty much, we only have a little bit left to do on this one. Um, we need to put our, I can't see my clear things. I've got them like laying around. We need to put our acetate down. So let me make sure my acetate does not have anything stuck to it. It's not dirty, all of that. And I'm going to take my stick fast. Let me just make sure that this fits on here where I think the glue needs to go. Yep. Okay. All right. So we're going to do just a light line of the stick fast glue around here. And you want to be very careful not to get glue down inside where your sequins are, because then you're going to have a mess on your hands after all your hard work, like I almost just did. And, um, Fight the temptation to pick this up and shake it when it's not completely dry. Trust me on that. <laughs> because you will want to pick it up and shake it and play with it before it's dry. And <clears throat> then the sequins are going to stick to the glue. Okay. Now, the shoe is going to go on top of here. And I still, I can't decide, y'all. Oh, you know what? I painted this gold. And... Nobody even said anything to me. Like, why are you painting that? I did not need to paint that. So I told y'all the wrong thing. I sat there and painted that entire piece. This is the only piece, piece that needs to be painted. I see, and I still, I still do that after making a, a ton of these shakers. So you did not need to paint that piece, but you know, whatever. So I probably will just paint that gold because I think I like the shoe gold. And then I think I'm going to do the letters, um, in black. Let's see how that looks. So I'm going to grab a black Posca pen. Oops. Yep. How is that going to look? I hope that looks good. It's just paint though, right y'all? If it doesn't look good, we just paint over it. No need to get stressed. And see how nice these paint pens are for painting your letters? They keep things nice and neat. You don't get paint everywhere. It takes very little paint. These pens last a long time. Okay, let me hold that up <clears throat> so y'all can see. I think that is super cute. All right, should we keep our shoe gold? Do y'all think we should keep it that color? Let me do this top layer. Oops, did I glue it to my table? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Now it's stuck. How did I get glue on the back of that already? Who knows? Um, I think since it's sticky, before it glues itself again, we're going to go ahead and glue it on and then we'll paint it after it's glued. Melissa says gold. Okay.
there's so many possibilities with this um with this set like for colors i just i can't wait to see what y'all do with all the different colors that you can do you know what would be really cool that i didn't even think of i just thought of something really neat do you guys um do, do y'all like glitter cardstock I've got glitter cardstock. If I had thought about this ahead of time, instead of painting this top layer, I could have done, this makes me really want to do it. I wish I could just run out to my garage and really quick do that, but that would take me a few minutes. If I cut this top piece out of glitter cardstock, so like, where's my glitter cardstock? Hold on. So I've got a bunch of colors. A bunch of colors of glitter cart. Look at this. Isn't this awesome? This blue one actually came from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree sells glitter cardstock sometimes. This white one is really pretty. It's like iridescent. You could do it. That would be pretty to do it in a white iridescent. That would be gorgeous. But I also have, I should have gold. I would think I would have gold of all colors. I'm sure there's gold in here somewhere. Hmm. Maybe I need to get some more gold. But yeah, gold glitter cardstock would be super pretty. This pink. If you didn't have the pink background, if you painted the, the background a different color, that blush pink glitter cardstock would be so pretty. That would be very cool to do that on the shoe instead of painting. So just yet another like, um, you know, option for these. Uh, that would really make the shoe pop. Yes, I think it would too. I think that'd be really pretty. All right, but I'm gonna go ahead with my um, gold paint pen and we'll finish our shoe I love fabric ribbon and cardstock so anytime that I could bring any of those things into um, a laser project I welcome the opportunity because I just I love all those things and I love to shop for them when I go to the craft store I'm drawn to the scrapbook paper aisle. So this just gives me an excuse to buy pretty scrapbook paper. And you know what I've also done in a pinch is, <clears throat> excuse me, is paint, painted, not painted, um, printed scrapbook paper, like digital paper. I've done that before too. You can go and just Google like printable digital paper and you can find if you're looking for a specific pattern, like I was looking for a red and black buffalo check when I did this. And basically I was making Christmas ornaments and I ran out of black and red buffalo check paper and I Googled it and I found a printable uh, one and I just printed some on paper or on white cardstock that I had. Um, yes, Irene. Oh my gosh. Do you know what you could do? You could do Dorothy's shoe, okay? You could do a Wizard of Oz little, you could do a red glitter purse and a red glitter shoe. See, why don't I think of this like after I'm already off, like, or getting ready to finish my project on here? That would be so freaking cute. I, now I wanna make this project again and do that. Okay, so here is our gold shoe. Oh, I love it. It's dry, so I can shake it. How fun is that? My glitter's getting like stuck up there. There it goes. How fun is that? I love it. Oh my gosh, Cinderella. Shelly, that blue. This blue. My daughter said my blue looked like Cinderella's dress. This is like a purpley blue nail polish, but this blue right here is like Cinderella's gown. Oh my gosh, that would be the cutest thing. I wish y'all, this is what I really wish. I wish that I could, that I could make Disney princess, um, any Disney, honestly, uh, files. Like I wish that Disney did not care if you made files like all day long of Disney stuff, but you can't do that. You can't, you, they just won't let you and it stinks. And I, I understand why. I mean, that's their, you know, personal property or whatever you, you call it, uh, digital property, I don't know, whatever you call it. That's their trademark. I get it. But 
I mean, the things that we could make if we could do that, right? I know some people still make it, but I can't, I can't make those files and sell them. I, I would get shut down if I did that. I can't do that. So unfortunately, but I would do that all day long if I could, if it was allowed. All right. So we're going to do our little purse. So we need, if I can, if I haven't lost all my pieces here, here's one piece. Where'd the other piece go? Can I leave it? Yeah, there it is. Oh, and I have a cute idea for this purse here at the end. All right, let me make sure these acetate pieces are kind of clean. And that's going to go down here. Oh my gosh, Emily. Hey girl, how are you? It's, I'm um, Sin says it's not worth it. No, you can't. You can't copy Disney, unfortunately. But how cute would a Cinderella uh, shaker file be? I mean, for real. But we can't do that. Okay, I think I have to move that up a little bit. I want to make sure I'm like not even not leaving any open areas on there. All right, there's our bottom piece. And... Here's our little top piece. I'm just gonna put a little bit right here where these two pieces overlap. I probably could have done this all in one piece, but shoot. There we go. Okay. That is on there perfectly. Um, I don't, yeah, Sin just asked me why I made it two pieces. I don't know. I had it as one piece and I changed it. I'm gluing myself together. I changed it to two pieces and I'm trying to remember why I did that in my brain. Because it was early in the morning when I made this file. I did that for a reason and I don't know why. I guess I just thought two separate compartments, two separate pieces. Um, yeah, I could have made it just one piece, but it's two pieces, so it works either way. All right, so then we're going to put this on, and I'll paint this when we're done. And y'all tell me what color I should paint my purse. And I'll show you, I have a fun idea for the little clasp on the purse. Oops, did I put glue on the handle? Yeah, I did. All right, now I'm gonna clamp these again. I think I'm gonna put one more clamp. No, I'm gonna do two more clamps actually. Let's do a clamp up here and a clamp at the bottom. There we go. Make sure that's on there nice and tight. Um, what did y'all do with the circle that goes on the purse? I engraved my initials. Oh my gosh, see, Jeanette, I didn't even think of that. You could put your initials on there. You could engrave it. That is the cutest idea. Okay, so this little circle also comes in the file, and this is for right here. And you can make that a different color, or as she was saying, you could you could monogram this. That would be super duper cute if you monogrammed it. My idea was to use one of those little half wood balls. Have y'all used these on any projects yet? Do you see what I have here? The little, it's like a half, you know, the wood, um, the beaded, uh, I don't even know what you call them. You know, the wood bead string garland things. What are they called? I don't know. Farmhouse beads. That's probably what they're called. Farmhouse beads. Um, so these are like half ones and they sell them on Amazon. Um, what speed did you cut the acetate on? So Tess, um, how are you, by the way? This, I used a thunder laser, so my settings are gonna be a little bit different. I think someone said 540, I think. Somebody with the Glowforge, did someone comment and tell me the settings on um, the 
or, or the acetate comment and let me know if you did all right i think this is probably pretty dry this stuff dries really quick all right so now what color should we paint our purse and our little um wood ball y'all tell me what you think um that's my next order oh the little half wood balls yeah they're really cute i think those are on my amazon supply list if they're not i will link those in the comments too if you guys are looking for them i have a whole bag of them because i've used them for multiple things they're really fun i have an idea like if i ever finish it i need to go out today and spray paint it actually i have my my big wall monogram that i still have not finished that i was going to put the wood beads all the way around so i still need to do that um oh tess you have a red and black okay well my acetate i'm trying to think for my funder what did i cut it on i cut it on whatever i cut cardstock on i think it was 500 and very low power like maybe 10 or 15. it was really really low power because it's so fast it cuts like in two seconds it's so fast okay so has anybody said a color that we should paint this i feel like we should paint it i don't know should we paint it black and then put like the little make the little ball gold or pink what do y'all think i'm so like choosing colors is like the hardest thing for me i don't know i think i might paint it black i feel like i don't use black very much so black with a gold okay melissa says black with a gold ball okay we're gonna go for it oh no wait that's gold And you could just use acrylic paint. Um, I've got my black pen handy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on going. If I hadn't already attached this piece, then I probably would just use acrylic paint. But since I've already attached it, I'm not gonna risk getting acrylic paint on my acetate. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use a paint pen because it's quick and easy. And I like to color kind of like adult coloring books, right? I hope y'all cannot hear my stomach growling. Yes, and I think it does look elegant. <laughs> Our sequin purse looks elegant, right? I think it'll make the sequins pop for it to be black. That'll make it fun. You could also do cardstock for this. So like think black glitter cardstock for this outer layer. How cute would that be? Talk about some bling. You'd be all blinged out. You'd have your sequins. You'd have your glitter cardstock. The wind is whipping outside, y'all. Had to go put my umbrella down. I keep seeing like things blowing around out there. I think I might be about to lose my top, my um, cover to my grill. I might have to go rescue it here in a minute. Um, Jenny says she used 540 on the acetate on a Glowforge Basic. Yeah, I think mine was 500 and like 10 or 15 on my Thunder. All right. Oh, that's cute. I like the black. I'm glad we went with the black. Now we need to do our little handle, our little clasp. And I would, um, sometimes I paint, the, usually what I do, honestly, though, y'all, with these little balls is I take them outside and I put them on a piece of um, cardboard and I spray paint them. But since I'm only doing one, then I can just do it. Um, I think I can probably just, yeah, just do it with my paint pen. But yeah, that is definitely the easiest way to paint these is to put them on a piece of cardboard and spray them. 
I don't know if y'all were watching my video where I was talking about um, painting a whole bunch of these though in my backyard and it was a windy day and <laughs> and my card, not my, I can't really say cardstock, my cardboard with my little wooden balls on it. I left it laying out there in the sun to dry and it wasn't out there 10 minutes and I walked back outside and it's gone. And I'm like, did I bring it in already? Like, am I, cause you know, I multitask and I forget like which task I've already done. I'm like, okay, maybe I brought it in already and I'm just losing my mind. Cause that, that would totally happen to me. It's probably laying on my dining room table. No, mm -mm. it had flipped up. The wind had blown it up. And I had these little white ones, little white wood balls all over my yard. Yeah, <laughs> that happened. So fun times in my backyard trying to pick up all these little wood balls. Adventures in crafting. Okay. Oh my goodness. I love, 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 love. Look how cute. I'm in serious love, but I still wanna see this whole thing done in red glitter. I wanna see Dorothy's shoe is what I wanna see. Um, you put a tack pin on the back of the half dome piece. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking if I was just doing a few, my idea was to, um, temporarily stick them onto the piece of cardboard with glue dots because I had a whole pack of glue dots and I think glue dots are great because you can always pull stump something off of a glue dot. It's not like a permanent thing, but it holds pretty well. And so that was my plan. But then I had so many to paint that I was like, oh, this is going to take me forever if I have to do all of these with glue dots. So I'm just going to spray them real quick. They're not going to be out here long. Yeah, they were everywhere. So I was able to salvage quite a few of them, though. <laughs> um, the paint was dry when they blew all over the place. So that was a good thing. Okay, what brand of acetate do I use, Melissa? Um, it does not matter. I have I have one of them linked on my um my website uh, on my supply list. Um, I think it's the Cricut brand, but honestly, it doesn't matter. I've used several brands that I've purchased all on Amazon, and they've all been the same. They're they were totally fine. So, um, no, Tess, I have not used refillable paint pens. Comment and let me know what brand are refillable. I don't know about those. That sounds awesome though. Okay, so here is our finished set. Aren't these so cute? We've got the little sequins all going around in there. How cute are those? I love them. I love shakers. Shakers make me happy. They're my favorite thing to make. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget, um, the file is 50% off through the weekend. Use code, um, what is the code? love to shop spelled out love to shop. Okay. That is the code for the 50% off. And the link to this file is in the video description. So thank y'all so much for tuning in. Let me know. Um, if you make this project, post a picture and share it. Uh, you can tag me on Instagram. Um, Tess says I've seen some on Amazon have not tried them yet. Yeah. I have not tried them yet either. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Irene and Sin. You guys are so sweet. All right. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.